Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gabin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I carry my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really happen now that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you guys, let's jump into the video. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Wednesday, our Wednesday class. Kumusta kayo? Ano mga ganap nyo? And before I further proceed, I would just like to greet you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Just in case I don't get to see you. Maraming maraming salamat nga po. Thank you, thank you very much for your continuous support support on the channel i've seen that we have a lot of new subscribers welcome welcome to the number one online class and i mean on youtube Yes, and to those um, you know, old subscribers, sa mga dati na maraming maraming salamat parin po sa patuloy yung pagsuporta sa channel ko. You guys are amazing. You guys rock. Now, kung di mo pa na papa noon, ayon yung upload ko ng Monday regarding nursing theorists and their theorists. I'll be putting the actual playlist link on the description box. Nandyan siya, panoorin mo. Kasi makakatulong yun sa'yo. Lalo sa mga nag-aaral ng fundamentals. Uh, um, tama. Fundament nursing theory. Which is like a prerequisite subject during first year. Diba? Ang saya. So, eto na tayo. Like you see on the title, this is all about nursing pharma. Yes, nursing drug study. And this is your vasopressin ultimate lecture guide. Your antidiuretic hormone and vasopressor. If you haven't watched the other nursing study guide I created under the concept of nursing pharmacology, where I have a lot and tons and tons and tons of drug study I created online just for you. I'll be putting the actual playlist link or whenever the icon button pops out, check the one out, click it because I'll be putting it there together with the other playlist I have on my channel. Ngayon, hindi ko na patatagalin pa medyo mahaba itong discussion na to mag proceed na tayo but before that before I share to you uh, proceed with a, a lecture aba baka naman mag subscribe ka muna go Ayan, maraming maraming salamat for doing that for me. Aba, nag-subscribe ka ba at nag-hit na notification bell para alam na alam mo yung next kong upload which is going to be this Friday oh Thank you so much. Thank you for you. Thank you to you. Wow. I don't know. Let me give you a, a, a what's this? An overview on what is a vasopressin. So vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, tinatawag natin ADH or arginine vasopressin, yung AVP, is a non-peptide synthesized in the hypothalamus. Science has shown it to play essential roles in the control of body's osmotic balance, blood pressure regulation, sodium homeostasis, and kidney functioning. Today, you're going to learn more about vasopressin, which is normally given as an infusion drip in the ICU. Or, minsan sa mga code blue, sa mga uh, ACLS, mga ganyan. Let me share to you the objectives for our today's discussion. I can talk to you. Okay, objectives. Today, we're going to have classification, generic brand name, and route do and dose of your vasopressin, mechanism of action, indication, contraindications, adverse effects, and this will not be a nursing pharmacology, nursing drug study if we're not going to touch down nursing responsibilities. Handa ka na ba? Hinga ng malalim. Eto na. Classification, generic, and brand name, route, and dose of administration. Very straightforward ito. Ito na ang inyong table. Make a screenshot, ha? Classification, antidiuretic hormone, vasopressor, period. Generic and brand name, and this goes respectively, vasopressin. Brand name, this is sold under the trade name, pitresin. Malinaw, malinaw. Now, in terms of route and dose, makinig na mabuti because I list, da, I list them down regard, um, in terms of the condition or the diagnosis of your patient. And uh, yeah, because it varies. For patients who are, are during cardiac arrest, 40 units IV, bolus, stat, may give intraosseous or via endotracheal tube for one single dose. Malinaw, malinaw. If your patient is diagnosed with GI bleeding, expect a loading dose of 20 units, slow IV bolus over 20 minutes. For maintenance nga yung IV drip infusions, 
maglalaro lang yung regulation mo between 0.2 to 0.4 units per minute. Ang um, tag dito, ang units niya is units per minute. Yan ang ilalagay mo sa iyong infusion pump. Okay? Now, IV drip infusion nga po yung, yung 0.2 to 0.4. Titrated to maximum dose of 0.9 units per minute. Nakadepende sa SOP ng, ng hospital nyo kung gano'ng kataas yung vasopressin na ibibigay mo sa pasyente. May mga regulation yan. Basahin mo yon na maigi para hindi ka na nalilito. So, sa hospital namin, example, 0.4 is the max dose of vasopressin you can give. Okay? Now, diabetes insipidus. I actually created a lecture material regarding this condition, a thorough and deep dive study regarding your diabetes insipidus. And kapag ang pasyente mo diagnosed with DI, ang ibibigay mo is 5 to 10 units sub-Q or IM 3 to 4 times daily. Depende pa rin yan sa order ng iyong doktor. For severe septic shock, for patients who are diagnosed with severe septic shock, this is an adjunct to norepinephrine infusion. Pwede ka rin mag-expect ng level fed, yung mga ganyan. IV infusion, infusion mo naman is 0.03 units per minute. Malino ba tayo dito? Malinaw. Magpo-proceed na tayo sa iyong mechanism of action. How does this medication works? You're gonna find that out on the next slides. Eto na tayo. Vasopressin is essential for cardiovascular hemiostasis. Pag sinabi mong hemiostasis, it is the state of balance. Acting via the kidney to regulate water reabsorption and the vascular to regulate smooth muscle tone and as a central neurotransmitter modulating brainstem, autonomic function. Vasopressin acts both within the brain and the peri uh, periphery to modulate blood pressure through sympathetic outflow. Yes, Sympathetic effect nga po ang yung vasopressin because it regulates vasoconstriction. Remember, with uh, sympathetic, the difference between your sympathetic and parasympathetic effect. For sympathetic nervous system, everything goes up except for GI and GU. For parasympathetic, everything goes down except for, goes down, everything goes down except for GI and GU. Okay, brief, brief review and refresher sa yung para and simpa sa kaling kita. Now, this modulates blood pressure through sympathetic outflow, baro reflex modulation, vasoconstriction, and renal fluid retention. These mechanisms vary by location and physiological state, leading to occasional contradictory responses to vasopressin. Once again, this is your mechanism of action. Kung hindi mo naman na-get sa unang pasada ang mga pinagsasabi ko dito sa videos na ito, char... Don't worry because if you're watching this video on YouTube, I will be dividing it into chapters. Nakakahiya naman sa'yo. Balik-balikan mo lang per chapters kung anong chapter na gusto mong malaman. So, magpaproceed na tayo sa indications. So, which patient will you expect to give vasopressin? Yan ang mga sasagutin natin sa video na ito. Charing. Eto na tayo. So, Bibigay mo yung pasyenteng, bibigay pasyenteng, ibibigay mo ang vasopressin sa pasyenteng may diabetes insipidus, which is, may dalawang klase kasi, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember right, may dalawang klase ng diabetes insipidus. Isa na dyan, yung tinatawag nating neurogenic or central DI, diabetes insipidus. Panoorin mo yung lecture ko about DI kasi napaka ano nun, napaka exciting nun, okay? And then, ibibigay mo rin siya. This is indicated for patients for asistole, ventricular fibrillation, pulseless ventricular fibrillation. Alternative vasopressor to first and second dose of epinephrine during cardiac arrest. Ito na yung sinasabi ko sa inyong dehydration to test for diabetes insipidus, GI hemorrhage from gastric ulcer or esophageal varices, and an adjunct, adjunct meaning additional, Medication to norepinephrine and severe septic shock. Once again, these are your indications for your vasopressin. Vaso or vaso? Arti ko lang. Vasopressin na tayo. Go. Contraindications na tayo. Before tayo mag-proceed, baka naman di ka mag subscribe Mag-subscribe ka na. Go. Thank you so much for doing that. I love you to the moon and back. Eto na tayo. Eto na tayo sa mga contraindications. Makinig ng mabuti. Wag kukurap, wag hihinga. Eto na. 
pare parang bingo lang. So this is not recommended after second dose of epinephrine has given during cardiac arrest. Meaning, sa nagko-code blue, sa mga ACLS dyan, first dose mo ay epi. Tapos magbibigay ka ng vasopressin as your second dose in adjunct or in replacement to epinephrine? No. Tama? Ay, tama? Okay? Okay. Next, ischemic heart disease, coronary artery disease, same thing. Not indicated to nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, nephritis with nitrogen retention because this is what eliminated through or processed through your kidneys. Not safe during pregnancy or lactation category X. Meron na tayong cautious warning with epilepsy, migraine, asthma, heart failure, angina pectoris, kidney disease, acute or chronic renal failure, all, uh, older adults, children, and lactation. Once again, these are the contraindications of your vasopressin. Magproceed na tayo. Naku, malapit na tayo matapos. Akala mo yun? Ano ba mga adverse effects ng yung vasopressin? Makinig na mabuti kasi malalaman mo dito ano yung mga dapat mong hindi i-expect sa pasyente na naka-vasopressin. Because magkaiba ang ibig sabihin ng adverse effects sa side effects. When you talk about side effects, that is expected effects that you can see once a patient is receiving the said medication. For example, vasopressin, that's expected of him. But when you uh, when you talk about adverse effects, this, these are the least effects that you could expect, meaning nagkakaroon ng intoxication ng pasyente or the patient is not responding very well to the medication. And that is what I'm going to, do, to discuss to you. On the next slide, eto na tayo. First adverse effect, Life-threatening hypertension, angina or MI, heart failure, dysarrhythmias, bowel ischemia, tia, uh, transient ischemic, um, transient ischemic, uh, ano pa yung tia? Transient, transient ischemic arrest or CVA, cerebrovascular arrest, anaphylaxis. Ngayon, alam mo na kung bakit hindi siya pinibigay sa MI, contraindicated siya because this, is, this could lead to actually MI. Next, we have your tremor, circumoral, circumoral, and facial pallor, pounding in the head, water intoxication, sweating, angino, uh, angioneurotic edema. Ito po siya, oh. Ayan. Next, you have your next contra uh, adverse effect, eructations, flatus nausea, vomiting, heartburn, abdominal cramps, uterine cramps sa mga babae. So, mapapasin mo sa mga pasyente na kavasopressin, meron silang periorbital edema kapag hindi na alagaan ng masyado ang, ano, ang infusion, hindi na bantayan. Ayan, nalunod ang pasyente ng vasopressin. Kaya nangyari, nagkaroon ng tinatawag nating, ano yung sinabi ko, angioneurotic edema, which is kindly, basically very visible sa eyes. Nagkakaroon ng Periorbital edema, may kasamang pangangate, may swelling of the eyes and swelling of the lips. Parang nagpa-lip filler ang pasyente. Eto na tayo. Tissue necrosis if IV infiltration occurs. <sighs> Makinig na mabuti. Kadalasan, binibigay ang vasopressin sa mga central line na pasyente. Very prone kasi ito and high risk for developing um, infiltration kapag nakaperiferal. Kaya normally, binibigay ito kapag nakasentral line na ang pasyente mo. Tissue necrosis if IV infiltration occurs. And kahit na nakasentral line na ang pasyente mo, dapat mo pa rin i-check from time to time ang alin ang iyong IV site. Very important. Depende sa SOP. Every hour kapag central line, every 4 hours naman peripheral line. Depende sa SOP nyo. Ganun lang sa SOP namin. Okay? SOP, hindi ano ah, hindi yung kapartner ng, ah, hindi yung ka, ano ng, ano, Kaano ng ASAP. Di ba? Yung dati. SOP meaning Standard Operating Procedure nyo sa hospital. Every hospital have their own SOP. So, might as well be aware about those things because because, <laughs> because it's really beneficial for you. Ngayon, bago tayo mag-proceed, sa next slide, sa nursing responsibilities, hindi ka pa rin subscribe Oh, daldal ako ng daldal dito. Go, subscribe na. Thank you so much. Handa ka na ba? Ito na tayo sa yung nursing responsibilities. As a nurse, 
what is your responsibilities if your patient is having an ongoing infusion of vasopressin? Ito na po, iisa-isahin ko sa inyo. First, as a nurse, drug interactions. That's one thing that you need to be aware of. Okay, be careful. Mga drug interactions mo, meaning drug-to-drug interactions, alcohol, demiclocycline, epinephrine, heparin, lithium, phenytoin may decrease ADH effects of vasopressin. Guanetidine and neostigmine increase vasopressor effect of vasopressin. Chlorpromam- ah, what's this? Sorry. Chlorpropamide, clofibrate, and carbamazepine and thiazide diuretics may increase the antidiuretic effect of vasopressin. What else? Drug incompatibilities. Do not mix with other drugs. Kaya, kapag ikaw, ewan ko sa inyo ha, sa SOP nyo, pero sa amin, kapag ang pasyente nakavasopressin, sa isang line lang siya, hindi mo siya imimix, meaning isang infusion pump sa isang vasopressin infusion. Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-mix sa kahit na anong gamot kapag may mga regular meds ka tapos i mo siya together with vasopressin. No. Okay? Because you're preventing drug-to-drug interactions. Monitor vital signs, especially blood pressure hourly during intravenous infusion. Very important. Monitor urine output and specific gravity. Kaya titingnan mo, ang normal urine output ng pasyente mo is 30 to 40. That's the normal per hour. Next, you have assess patient closely for signs of chest discomfort or TIA. Look for signs of life-threatening conditions such as arrhythmias. Ano pa? Yung mga nursing responsibilities mo. You have your if anginal or ischemic episodes occur with intravenous infusion, a concurrent IV inf- uh, infusion of nitroglycerin may relieve this adverse effects. So kapag nag-positive sa angina, or chest pain ng pasyente mo, pwede mag-order ng doktor ng nitroglycerin infusion together with your uh, vasopressin. Pero hindi mo siya ipagsasama sa isang linya lang, sa saktang kita. Okay ba yun? Para lang ma-relieve yung alin, yung chest pain ng pasyente mo. Next, watch patients for fluid volume alterations. What do I mean by this? If vasopressin dose for DI is insufficient, the patient can become dehydrated. If vasopressin dose for DI is too large, the patient may become overhydrated. Fluid intoxication. Children, especially infants and elderly, are more susceptible to fluid alterations. Hence, you are monitoring your INO. IV infusion should be administered through a central venous line if possible. What did I tell you? Madalas talaga na binibigay ito sa mga, paano ulit? Madalas talaga na binibigay ito sa mga pasyenteng naka-central line na. Kasi nga para ma-avoid yung infiltration. Okay? Extravasation. Mga ganon. Next, watch peripheral IV sites closely for early signs of infiltration. Extravasation of vasopressin may occur, may cause tissue necrosis to skin. Diba? Tissue necrosis, mga maputulan pa yun ang kamay ang pasyente mo. Therefore, monitor IV site every hour. Have fentolamine, regentine, close to bedside of the patient, which is an antidote for your vasopressin. Next, an alternative for diabetes insipidus treatment is desmopressin, DDAVP, which may be given intranasally BID and has less vasopressor effect than vasopressin. Once again, this is your nursing responsibilities. At dyan na nga natatapos ang ating online class for this Wednesday. Maraming maraming salamat po. I hope you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. For my nursing educational videos, let me know if you have other nursing topics you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan mo nga yung next upload natin this coming Friday because I'm thinking of uploading nursing test banking. Yes. Alam ko kayo, excited na excited kayo sa mga ganon. Kaya naman, your wish is my command. Tulungan nyo na nga ako, ipamalitan nyo na sa radyong sila ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh at ang pinakalibring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And don't forget to follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is basically at Neil Gave, except for my tech tech account, which is Neil Gave Official. I have a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Gabe. Gabe? Gabe, which I recently uploaded last Tuesday. Uh, yesterday. And then this video lecture is going to be available 
also on my Facebook page. Check that one out. And if you wish to share it to your social media platforms, don't forget to tag me so just I can say thank you and say how much I appreciate you. I will see you again on Friday and you have a good one.